Hello, my next guest has been winning swimming medals for fun since making her Paralympic debut at Rio 2016, complete with gangster walk-on. It's Ellie Robinson. Hi Ellie, great to talk to you. Oh, it's good to talk to you too. Now you are a Paralympic European Commonwealth champion in 50 metres butterfly, that's right, isn't it? And a world silver as well. Can you, um, can you believe the few years you've had since making your debut at, at Rio? To be honest, they've gone so quickly. I didn't expect them to because I remember when I came back from Rio 2016 and the four years to Tokyo seemed like so long and it's gone so quickly and it's really kind of surprised me. So, yeah, and I think having one thing every year, you never really have time to let it soak in because you're just working for the next thing. But, yeah, it's one, yeah the one thing that's really surprised me is how quickly it's all gone. <laughs> What was that Rio experience like in particular? Because that, that must have been pretty amazing for you. Because I was so young and I think it was my second international competition. Because my first was Europeans in the same year. I was still quite inexperienced. So for me, it was just this whole new world. And there were so many athletes and so many nationalities in one pool. And it was just the coolest thing to go to. And yeah, it was just, I think, where I did a lot of, a lot of growing up was I became quite independent because obviously you're living with teammates but you still have to kind of look after yourself and everything and I was just turned 15 so it was a proper kind of well if you didn't know how to make your bed now you do <laughs> <laughs> making the bed in, in the in the Olympic village or Paralympic village is the bit you remember most <laughs> yeah and the, the kind of washing service as well you put all your stuff in a little mesh bag and then you go and hand it in I don't know why but that's a really vivid memory of getting my clothes washed <laughs> <laughs> and what was it like for you particularly as a 15 year old to suddenly get out of the pool and probably a few hours later I imagine get messages or people saying to you you your walk on with the big jacket has become world famous it's everywhere on social media and they're showing it on channel four I remember it was after the medal ceremony and one of the coaches was kind of walking me back to the pool. I think I was allowed to see my parents a little bit just for a few minutes. And as we were walking up to the stands, he said, oh, you're number one trending on Twitter. And I was like, no way. <laughs> and it was so weird because obviously I didn't plan to do anything with the coat or anything like that. It just sort of happened. And um, I remember... I was on the last leg and they were like, oh, so what, why do you do it? And I was like, oh, my straps are too tight. And looking back at that, that, is, that just wasn't true. I was just so in the zone. I was just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I remember, yeah, he told me that and I looked at it and it was just so weird. It was so weird. But I guess when you're, in, when you're at Paralympic Games, you're just in this little bubble. And yeah, it's just, it's, it's so nice. Oh, it's just so like. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true you're inspired by watching Ellie Simmons at 2012, London 2012? Yeah, so I went to a talent ID day um, in 2012 and that was I think July time and I went there and these talent spotters from Swim England and British Swimming, they watched me swim and afterwards we had a chat and they were saying like, oh you're, you're right at swimming, quite good. And I'd never done anything, I wasn't at a club, I'd only done sore swimming lessons so I remember they said like, oh, you could be, you could kind of compete internationally. So we managed to get tickets to the Paralympic Games. I watched Ellie Simmons. I remember sitting there and what, we watched the heat. I remember watching her heat and just sitting there and going, I want to do that. <laughs> and it's kind of what all young kids say. They sit there and they're like, I want to win medals. <laughs> and it was just so weird how, yeah, I watched her race. And then I think because we have the same disability, the same name, it was all kind of like, oh, look, me. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. That's what it's all about, really, isn't it? But uh, mm -hmm. how hard is it now that you've got to wait another year for Tokyo? Because I, I imagine you were getting to the point where it was feeling very, very real, very close, and then it's been sort of taken away from you a little bit. Yeah, I think I would say secretly, but it's not going to be a secret anymore. <laughs> um, I'm actually really happy that we've got another year obviously circumstances in the way that we've got another year I'm not happy about at all but I think with the extra year it's I want to look at it more of an opportunity rather than something bad because I think another well another another year of training we have more time to build up kind of the second 
second part of my race and kind of more fitness and we can analyze more I can work more on the 53 as well as the 50 fly as well so for me it's um yeah looking at it as a good thing it means I can find more training and I can really kind of look at the nitty-gritty parts not that we weren't already but I can go into even more depth and I can start to kind of look at different events now so I'm actually quite happy that I've got that extra year because I think after after Rio I found it quite difficult because I had GCSEs and obviously I was at that age where I started to plateau as well so I kind of I did find it quite hard in training so having that extra year is kind of allowing me to redeem myself after 2017. <laughs> And what kind of training are you able to do at the moment? I, I was speaking to Mallory Wegerman in the USA last, last oh, week and you mentioned some kind of, well, gadget or bit of gym equipment where she can actually still practice her swimming stroke on dry land. Nice. It seemed to be some sort of bench that she can lie on and do some kind of stroke. But what, what, what are you actually able to do at the moment whilst, whilst in lockdown? So at the minute we're doing um, squad Zoom sessions. So... Uh, every morning I'll either have a squad Zoom session or a one-on-one -on -one with my land coach. So, And then I do a fair bit of cycling, although I can't today because it's raining quite a lot. <laughs> so cycling would be a bit of a tricky one today. But um, no, we do um, Zoom sessions, so one-on-one -on -one with, my, with my land coach, or we do kind of group ones with the squad. And that's really nice because obviously we can't see all of our swimming squad, but it's nice to be able to kind of have a bit it's not contact but be as close as we can without actually being next to each other <laughs> you're still only 18 so how's your education been hit by by the virus what, what's happening there whenever i explain my education people always get really confused so <laughs> was, yeah so i did two a levels last year um just to help balance with my swimming so i think if i'd done three it would have been a bit too much and I think it would have been quite difficult to balance everything. So I did two last year and this year I was doing an AS level just in the one year to kind of give me something to do so I'm so it's not just swimming, 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 but also for an extra qualification as well. But my school, the school that I went to didn't do the AS level that I'm doing now. So I had to do it privately with a tutor and then go through as an external candidate to sit the exams and everything. Both of have been cancelled, so I'm kind of waiting to see what they're doing with external candidates. So, and what subject were you were you waiting on? What subject were you due to be doing? Oh, so I'm doing Italian at the minute. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Well, we should have done this interview in Italian. Oh no, I would have struggled. <laughs> 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 answer questions on a book, but <laughs> when she's not asking me questions, like just in general, honestly, I would flake. <laughs> <laughs> Now, the other thing, I know you're a big fan of Formula One, so how much are you missing the Formula One and, and, and desperate for it to return? Yeah, oh, I remember um, in March when Melbourne was cancelled, was one of my mates was out in Australia, she was doing a bit of travelling, and she was sending me messages, and I was just, I think I must have been, we must have been asleep with, like, the time difference, so I woke up, and there was just all these messages, I was like, Ellie, it's been cancelled, um, no. <laughs> And obviously it's such a shame not having it, but if they do manage to put a bit of a season together with, so I think they need a minimum of eight races over three continents, that could be a complete lie. And I've just kind of believed some random lie that's been out on the internet. <laughs> but if it is true, it could make it really exciting because it means like every race counts, but you don't know. You don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. And in the absence of Formula One and, and sort of proper swimming and things like that, what else is kind of keeping you uh, occupied during this lockdown? Is there anything you particularly watch or listen to or read or anything like that? Um, so I'm watching a series called Manifest at the minute, and that's quite good to enjoy that. And we also have squad uh, cooking sessions as well on Zoom. So our coach will kind of give us a recipe and then we'll all cook together. And then we will have to take a photo and send it into the group chat <laughs> once we're finished. Fantastic, <laughs> so what well, great idea. Because I never really used to cook. And it's really kind of, again, just like Rio, this quarantine has forced me to kind of grow up a little bit more. Just like, you will start cooking. Because I don't know when I'm going to go to university. But it'd be, it would have been a bit of a shock, kind of going with no cooking experience to fend for yourself. <laughs> 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 you'll get to university and you'll be telling people right I know how to make my bed because of the Rio Paralympics <laughs> I know how to cook exactly. because of the lockdown <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like 
where's, where's the washing service? <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, hope, uh, hope you're cooking and everything keep on uh, going well over the next uh, few weeks or however long this, this lasts. And thanks for uh, yeah. making the time to, to speak to me. Oh, thank you. I really enjoyed that. It was just quite nice. It was quite it was a good start to my day. Oh, yeah. Me too. Don't judge me. I woke up at like half nine. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you're not going back to bed now, you're going to get up and yeah, do no, I'm, I'm up now. <laughs> <laughs> thanks very much, Ellie. Ah, uh, thank you.